Hi, today first I'm going to install the TP-Link RE220 which is a dual band wireless repeater and uh, for what it's worth it is right now the best selling repeater on Amazon and then I'm actually going to put it to the test and that's the part I'm really excited about. Why? Because uh, if you follow this channel you probably know that in the last couple of videos I talked about single band wireless repeaters and how they work and then I installed and tested one of them, I mean this TP-Link model and then talked about dual band wireless repeaters how they work and how at least on paper they're much better than single band wireless repeaters and today I actually get to put one of them to the test and see it in action is it really worth the extra money over a single band wireless repeater so let's find out first let's quickly have a look at the repeater As you can see, there are no external antennas on this repeater. We have the LED lights on the front, plus a small WPS button. There is also a reset button and an Ethernet port which is 100 megabits per second. We will get back to it later when we are actually testing this repeater. The wireless standard is 802.11ac or Wi-Fi 5 and the maximum theoretical speed is 750 megabits per second. Overall it looks nice on the outside but how does it look on the inside? I guess there's only one way to find out. So let's set it up and do some interesting tests. Alright first I'm gonna plug it into an outlet which is close to my wireless router. Now the repeater is going to broadcast its default wireless network only on the 2.4 GHz band and the name is TP-Link Extender. Next I will connect my computer to it, open a browser and type in its default IP address. And then create a password for its user interface. Here I can find the 2.4 GHz network of the wireless router and connect the repeater to it. Next, I can also connect the repeater to the 5 GHz network of the wireless router. Here, I can choose the SSID or network names for the 2.4 GHz and also the 5 GHz networks that the repeater is going to broadcast. Unfortunately for the password, uh, I cannot choose my own and it has to be the same as the primary wireless router. And if you remember, it was the same case with the single band TP-Link repeater we installed before. We are almost done, now it is time to put the repeater in its right place. I'm also gonna connect to its new wireless network and log in again. As you can see the repeater is successfully connected to the wireless router using the 2.4 GHz and also the 5 GHz bands. And it is also broadcasting on both frequency bands. Now I'm going to give the repeater a static IP address which is not going to change and I know exactly what it is. Also I'm going to check for any firmware updates and if there is any available I'll make sure I install it. So with this repeater, as you saw, you can actually connect it to the wireless router using both radios. But it doesn't mean it is actually going to use both of them at the same time for data transfer. Only one of them is going to be used, probably the one with higher data rates. I mean the one with better quality. You would usually see this behavior in mesh devices. For example, this ASUS wireless router. If I want to use it as a repeater, I can connect it to the wireless router using either of the frequencies, not both of them. But when I want to use it as a mesh node in the AI mesh system, it automatically connects to the wireless router using both radios. So one possible advantage of this behavior could be redundancy. I mean, if for whatever reason one of the radios goes down, or if it is just too bad, the other one can be used. But one possible disadvantage could be that um, actually because it is connected using both radios, when it is rebroadcasting wireless networks, they're going to be on the same channel as the primary wireless routers networks, which is bad. And we actually talked about this in the previous videos. But I personally prefer 
prefer to dedicate one radio to the backhaul and the other one to the clients. But at least now I know with this repeater I actually have all these options available and I can use whichever is more suitable for me. So basically here I can choose whether I want to connect my repeater to the wireless router using the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz or both radios. And here I can choose whether I want it to broadcast using the 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz or both radios. And as I said before, I personally prefer to use different radios for this and this purpose. In fact, if I go to the advanced settings, there is a high speed option and if I enable it, it will do the same thing. I mean, it will use one radio here and the other one there. Now, if I set it to auto, it should automatically decide which one should be used where. I can also select either of these manually myself. Okay, so I checked the signal strength or RSSI of the repeater in three different places of my house and then compared it side by side with my ASUS AC68U wireless router, which I guess has uh, officially become my benchmark. As you can see, for the 2.4 GHz band, uh, the RSSI of ASUS was stronger in every place. For the 5 GHz band though, they were more or less the same everywhere, which was interesting. So next I did the speed test, uh, the interesting part actually. Uh, let me show you uh, in this. Yeah. We're good. So I actually used iPair for the speed test and there are two laptops and one of them as you can see is permanently connected to the wireless router with an ethernet cable. The other one though uh, is connected to the repeater but once using the 2.4 gigahertz band, uh, once using the 5 gigahertz band and once with an ethernet cable. Okay, I started off the speed test with this setup, 2.4 gigahertz all across the board. And the best results I got was 35 megabits per second on channel 10. Then I moved to the 5 gigahertz band everywhere and I got maximum 75 megabits per second on almost every channel. But as you can see the 5 gigahertz was more than twice as fast as the 2.4 gigahertz. But as we explained in the previous video, using two different radios here is most likely gonna give me even better performance. And it sure did, because when I used the 2.4 GHz for the clients and 5 GHz for the backhaul, the speed jumped to 92 megabits per second. And it got even better when the backhaul was 2.4 GHz and the other one was 5 GHz. With this setup, I actually was able to reach 110 megabits per second. So that actually means both of these radios are capable of reaching 110 megabits per second here. But one of them should be the bottleneck, right? I mean, at least on paper, the 5 GHz is expected to be faster. So the bottleneck is probably the 2.4 GHz. I mean, based on the 75 megabits per second I got here, I can somehow guess that this should be probably around 150 megabits per second, maybe more up to 200. But whatever it is, based on this setup, this computer was able to reach 110 megabits per second. But just look what happened when I connected the computer with an ethernet cable to the repeater instead of the 5 gigahertz network. And surprisingly the same number when I used the 5 GHz radio for the connection between the repeater and the wireless router, which I expected to be even faster than the 2.4 GHz. So a lot of things that we talked about in the previous video, I was actually able to demonstrate them in this video too, which was interesting for me and I hope it was interesting for you too. For example, we said it is more likely to get the best performance if we use different radios for the backhaul and for the clients, which happened to be true, uh, well at least in my testing environment here. But it's not going to be always like that, I mean depending on the conditions of the frequency bands channels, there might be exceptions too. And the numbers I got in my tests were actually based on my testing environment here. And it doesn't mean everybody should get the same numbers. Now let's talk about the Ethernet port which is 100 megabits per second and not 1 gigabits per second. As we saw in this speed test, I can guess if this was a gigabit port, I probably could have reached 150 or maybe up to 200 megabits per second. So this port was actually the bottleneck. So is that really a big deal? 
Well, obviously not for many people who only want to use this device as a repeater to extend the range of their Wi-Fi for the wireless clients and not any wired clients. Basically, they're not even going to use this port. But if somebody wants to use this device as an access point or a client bridge, I mean use it to connect a wired device to the network, then they should be aware that this is the maximum speed they can reach even if the wireless is faster. Now that brings us to the question we asked in the beginning of this video. Is the dual band repeater worth the extra $10 over the single band repeater? I would say yes. I mean this guy might still have its own use case but when for only $10 extra I can buy one with a secondary radio which as we saw makes it much faster, it doesn't make sense to go with this one. Besides it is 2020 and most of our household devices are already dual band so why not take advantage of that. It is worth noting that instead of just buying a new repeater, you might be able to convert your old wireless router that you don't use anymore into a repeater. I actually have some videos on that subject, a link in the video description. In that case, you don't need to spend some money to buy a new device and you can recycle your old wireless router, which is good for your wallet and the environment. But something that I haven't talked about yet is that this guy actually supports one mesh which is the whole home Wi-Fi system for the TP-Link devices and I know a lot of people ask me to talk about one mesh so that's what we're gonna do in the next video but until then thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you liked it please give it a thumbs up if you did share it if you think others might like it too and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this thank you again and I will see you next time <laughs>